I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyker is retired. In this chapter of the silent service, we are going to take you on two dramatic cruises of the USS Seawolf, which helped to solve one of our most urgent and mystifying problems of the war at sea. In the first year of the war, far too many of our torpedoes were not going off properly. Skill and heroism went for nothing as torpedoes failed again and again. Our submariners seized over this dangerous situation. Lieutenant Commander Fred Water of Grafton, West Virginia. Skipper of the United States submarine Sea Wolf. Executive Officer Lieutenant William DeRagan of Albany, New York. Early in 1942, Sea Wolf had opposed enemy landings near Valley and had panicked Japanese convoys. But Tokyo Rose had a different version of the affair as usual. Our fleet has again shown its superiority over the Allied submarines vainly trying to penetrate our waters. In a recent landing on the island of Valley, our forces ran into an entire nest of American submarines. Our hey, fleet at rose. once took offensive measures to neutralize the undersea attack. Our landings proceeded unabated and one American submarine was definitely destroyed. Dead! Dead, dead, dead! Not one enemy submarine was able to accomplish a successful attack. Oh, come on, Tom. You know she's kidding. It isn't funny. Not to me. Okay. And while you brave submariners endure the depths charging of our magnificent fleet, your countrymen stay home with a lovely woman. Listen to the beguiling music. Listen to Jenny was a lady from the great hit Lady in the Dark while you huddle in your darkness. And think it over, boys, while you hear this. Not that we aren't great. Hmm. It's very nice work, Loesch. Well, thank you, sir. I could do a better job if I had a good camera. These are for you and the captain, sir. Oh, well, thank you very much, boss. You're Thanks. welcome, sir. Captain, just picked up this dispatch from headquarters. Their reconnaissance shows transports, destroyers, and cruisers en route to Lombok Straits. We're supposed to intercept. Huh? I'd say that convoy was headed for Christmas Island. And it's phosphates the enemy is hurting for. Too bad, but we can't do a thing about it. We've been sunk. Haven't you heard? Oh. There it is. Christmas Island. Flying Fish Cove. It's like we got here ahead of the Japanese Imperial Navy. We could blow up the dock. Ah, uh, some natives might get hurt. We'll just cruise around a bit. Or... Sleep? Yeah. Can I wake you up? If you want to know the truth, you woke me up. Or if I've got a print of a certain picture, can I get copies made of it? I haven't you got the negative? I told you what I got. All right. Don't wake up the fleet. I just have this old print back home. It's the only good picture we've got of Bert. You can get a negative made of the print, and then have all the prints made you want. Oh. Thanks, Or. I'll write my mother to do that. Lousy, dirty. Don't feel like that, Tom. Look, I feel what I feel. You're letting it eat you. I wanted to eat me. They killed Bert, didn't they? It's a war. Bert was a prisoner. He was out of the war. He didn't have to die like that. He was out of it. Yeah. Well, you write your mom and have her take the positive in and then make a negative. Better get some sleep, Tom. Captain picks up that convoy. It's gonna be hot, boy. I can't wait. The following day, Sea Wolf made contact with the convoy and went into action. Angle on the bow, 10 starboard. Mark. Hey. Range. Mark. 2650. Stand by four tubes, set depth 10 feet. Stand by four tubes, set depth 10 feet. 
Open outer doors. Open outer doors. Fire one. Fire two. Fire two. Torpedoes running hot screws merging with target screws. Got her. Let's look at the damage. Through March 31st into April 1st, the battle continued. Sea Wolf returning to attack the big convoy, undaunted. Captain Water watching his torpedoes seemed to score hits on three separate ships until at last contact was lost. The Battle of Christmas Island was over. One submarine against a heavily armed convoy. An epic of submarine warfare had been written in smoke. Sea Wolf headed for Australia for rest and for a reckoning. But you didn't actually see any of your targets sink. And I took risks to find out. I thought it that important to try to determine what's wrong with our torpedoes. If anything. Look, I believe every skipper in the service has reported torpedoes that explode prematurely, torpedoes that don't explode at all, torpedoes that run in circles endangering our own craft. I, I'm not alone. Granted, you aren't. But we know, however, that the Mark 14 torpedo is a fine weapon if a bit sensitive and temperamental. Temperamental? It's a prima donna that exposes us all to very serious dangers. Are you observing the Bureau of Ordnance regulations regarding the use of the torpedo? No. Oh? The torpedoes do not go off magnetically when set for the depth the regulations recommend. We have to experiment with other settings. Oh, I see. We examine every torpedo we receive from warhead to afterbody. We baby those fish outrageously. About your crew. What about them? Do you have complete confidence in your torpedo man? Complete and absolute. Isn't it possible that errors in fire control or technique somewhere may be at the root of all this trouble? The excitement of combat, inexperienced men. It's possible. But no amount of skill and experience is going to compensate for faulty torpedoes. Oh, come now, Captain. I'll go further, sir. I'll guess that the Asiatic submarine force is inflicting no more than 15% of the damage it's capable of with proper weapons. We're going to lose men and submarines if we continue serving up engraved announcements in the form of duds that give opposition to the enemy. Well, I'll certainly forward your report and your views to Washington and to the Naval Torpedo Station at Newport. Good. When? It can't happen too soon, believe me. Send off a letter at once. A letter? Good day. And good luck on your next patrol. Thank you. Glad and proud to be going out with this crew on our seventh patrol. Needless to say, but I'm saying it. I'm telling you this. We've had a lot of luck and we've had some bad breaks. But with your help, we're going to find an explanation for the bad ones. One more thing. We're going to get a big one this time. And we're going to watch it go down. That's a promise. What are we supposed to do? Frisk any Japanese we find swimming for this here junk somebody heisted in Fremantle? <laughs> are they kidding? Watches. Cameras, binoculars, small arms, value to 3,000 bucks or more. Or less. All right, turn out your pockets. There'll be no questions asked, no embarrassment. Oh, hi, Orv. Hi, Tom. I'm going to play some cards. Yeah, sure, fine. Uh, 
Well, listen, let's use your deck. Well, what's the difference? Well, yours aren't so broke up. All right. November 2nd, 1942. Sea Wolf had penetrated into Davao Gulf, Mindanao, and the Philippines, looking for enemy shipping and for vital answers. Our torpedoes have been passing under targets without exploding. There's something wrong with our magnetic exploders. I'm going to prove it. Somehow. I think I've got it, Willie. First, we've got to find a target that presents absolutely no fire control problems. So we can't possibly miss. Second, the ship has to be in such a position that a miss will go on to explode beyond her, proving it ran straight. That could only mean a ship lying at anchor in harbor. At anchor or at the dock in Tolomo Bay, to be exact. Among all her rowdy sisters, cousins, and friends. Yeah. November 2nd found Seawolf cruising cautiously towards Tolomo Bay and her perilous experiment. Hey, how come no pictures lately, Or? When? At dawn on my watch? Oh, no, I mean when you get special permission. Now, I wouldn't mind a new snapshot of Lou Trask to send home. I'm Lou Trask, remember? I don't have my camera anymore. You don't have your camera. No, I uh, must have lost it in Fremantle. Look, I know film is in short supply. I'll replace the film. Make it my business. Look, we're not on a pleasure cruise. All of a sudden, you're telling me what we are? Listen, buddy. Look, Lou, keep your watch. I got a proposition for you, chum. I'll keep my watch. You keep your film. Jeez. Out of a clear sky, ideal for snapshots. No camera, unquote. What's the gag, do you suppose? He wouldn't live without some kind of a camera. If he did lose his little camera in Fremantle, you mean to tell me he wouldn't get another one someplace? Who's he trying to con? I don't think. Gil? Yeah? Did you ever find that gold locket your wife sent you with her and her kids' pictures in it? Must be someplace in the ocean. Don't remind me. Dinky little silver penknife I used to have. Used to belong to my brother. Well, nobody cares about pen knives anymore. Unless it belonged to your only brother, who happens to be dead now. I wonder whatever happened to it. What do you mean? You're kidding or something, aren't you? You're the one said Arf came aboard at night on your watch when he had Liberty in Fremantle. Yeah, but that... Yeah, after that stuff got heisted in town. So anybody can lose something. <laughs> Briscoe missed his fountain pen after that jab of Brannigan. Gold, wasn't it? Oh, now cut it out, fellas. Who'd be such a healy'd heist hey, some stuff? Bridge. <laughs> Battle stations any time now. Anybody want to start a pool that says when? Orv, you wouldn't have seen a silver pen knife of mine around, would you? You asked me that before. Well, you can comb the boat again, I suppose. Never mind. Oh, I know how much that pen knife meant to you, Tom. Forget it. Come on, let's give it another whirl. I said forget it! Sure, Tom, I... All right. On November the 3rd, 12 miles from Tolomo Harbor, the captain gave the order to submerge. Cautiously, the wolf felt out a channel clear of mines, and then pushed forward towards the teeming harbor. The answer to a submarine skipper's prayer. Made in the Orient. Motor ship, heavy guns aft, brand new and beautiful. She's a sitting duck. We'll move in close so we just can't miss. Current zero, target speed zero. Angle on the bow, 110 starboard. How do you head? 306, sir. Come left to 305. Aye, aye, sir. Tubes forward. Set all gyros at zero and disengage spindles. 
Tubes forward. Set all gyros at zero and disengage spindles. We'll shoot a straight bow shot. Not taking any chances this time. Help scope. Three five zero. Oh. I'll jarrow set at zero, sir. Right. Set depth eighteen feet. Set depth eighteen feet. Figure that baby draws about twenty feet, and allowing for our fish to run a little deeper than the setting, they ought to explode magnetically right underneath that maru, right? Let's hope. Bow tubes ready, sir. Depth set eighteen feet. Stand by forward. Stand by forward. Final observation and shoot. Final observation and shoot. Bearing. Mark. Zero, zero, zero. Range. Mark. One, one, double O. Oh. Stand by. Stand by. Fire one. Fire one. As the crow flies. Down scope. That torpedo works like Gordon says it will. We'll bust that ship in half. can't possibly miss. We all here know that, don't we? For the record. Good. Help scope. Well, that's for you, Bert. That was not a hit. Fish passed under point of aim and exploded on the dock. Pipe down. Fish passed under target and exploded on the beach. Stand by two. Stand by two. Sir. Captain. I've been working on a sort of an adapter with a new camera I got. If you put it against a periscope, you can take a picture. It might help us prove things. Get it. Yes, sir. Zero, depth set at eight feet. All you do is put this against the eyepiece and click this, and it should take a picture. I hope. Stand by two. Stand by two. Very mark. Zero, zero, zero. Range. Mark. Nine, five, oh. Fire two. Fire two! and it didn't premature. It just didn't go off at all. The fourth torpedo was another dud, and Seawolf on a heavy counterattack spread it out of the bay. Not to escape, but to reload. I promise the boys a big one, and that's what they're going to get. If I have to ram that maroon. A half hour later, Seawolf, reloaded, was boring in again to within 900 yards of the enemy. Point blank range. And this time, luck changed. This time, it was a hit. The Sagami Maru heaved and almost broke in two. Down scope. Let's get out of here. Why didn't you tell me you were saving that valuable film for the Thanksgiving game? What'd you want to hold out for? 
That's some camera you got on. We always thought you had just a little box camera. Yeah, you've been holding out on us. Our motto is snap us while we're young. Where'd you get the camera, Orv? Let's have a look at her clothes, huh? Keep out of my locker. I wasn't going in your locker. Thought you were. Nobody here would go into somebody else's locker. Just common courtesy. What's the big production? If he doesn't want to tell you about the camera, he doesn't have to. You act as if it's a crime to have a good camera. I... I picked it up in Fremantle. Loesch. Orville Loesch. Captain would like to talk to you. Yes, sir. My pal. Come in, Loesch. These pictures are excellent. We fired six torpedoes, four of them were defective. These pictures will go a long way toward helping ordnance find out what's wrong with our Mark 14 torpedo. It was a fine idea. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Is that all, sir? That's well, all for now, yes. Fine camera you were using, wasn't it? What kind is it? Certainly isn't the one you've been using. No, sir. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to take a look at it. Yes, sir, I'm afraid I have a confession to make. I've been broke all my life. I've been wanting a good camera for a long time. I get a big bang out of taking good pictures. You know, the day I had Liberty back in Fremantle... You didn't buy one of those cameras that was reported stolen in Fremantle? No, sir. I didn't buy any stolen cameras. Well? All right. I felt awful after I did it. You know, Tom Jessup, my best friend, and after his brother dying in a prison camp, after I did it, I realized what an insult it was to Tom and Bert. Well, that's Tom's brother, Bert. Well, I mean, here we are at war with Japan, and after all the, the harm they've done us, here I go and buy a Japanese camera. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. I'm very happy to present Rear Admiral Frederick B. Water, Director of the Undersea Warfare Division and Commander of the Sea Wolf on the patrols you have just witnessed. Fred, you're one of those submariners who had the impossible task of trying to stop the initial Japanese onslaught against the Southern Islands. It must have been pretty rough going. Yes, there were a lot of times when we didn't know when or where we were going to find our next can of beans. Piling up your torpedo trouble on top of that was quite a load. Well, I wouldn't want anyone to get the impression that Sea Wolf fought the battle of the dubious torpedoes alone. Our photographs proved very valuable proof, but a lot of submarines took risks to get hits that didn't happen. Their reports caused quite a stir, both ashore and afloat. But once the ordnance had the proof, they began sending us the finest torpedoes that could be built. Yes, from then on, it was only a matter of time before Japanese sea power was completely shattered. Congratulations to you on your great contribution to that success. Thanks, Tom. Please be with us again when the Silent Service brings you another true and exciting submarine story. Take your dolls and off your line. Through the deep blue underneath the ocean sun, we'll control the ocean flies from down, down underneath the sea. Take the course, but the word in the future yet to be. That we're safe as long as there's a submarine that underneath the sea. Deep.
Underneath the sea